So I want to show you how to create a master or what some people call a gold image of Windows Server 2019. Now, the reason we're going to do this is if we needed to deploy a server quickly with this image, we can easily use it, whether it's in a virtual machine or, you know, create a bootable disk with the image in order to deploy a machine very quickly that already has a lot of, say, the updates or changes or modifications. And frankly, a master disk can even include some software that you might need. Now, I'm going to bring this over. What, what you can see here is that I'm using the Insider Preview for Server 2019 um, right here to do this demonstration. I'm actually going to build my gold image as a virtual machine and then once I'm done, I will go ahead and just use the virtual hard disk, redeploy that through a copy, and I'll be ready to go. The reason I do that is because the majority of my production machines now are virtual. So here's how we're going to get started. We're going to come in here and do new virtual machine. And then from there, we just need to follow the prompts. Now, I'm going to definitely name this so that I know I'm going to go Windows Server 2016 Master Disk Image. So I'm going to know that this is my master disk image. And the cool thing is, although I'm going to copy the virtual hard disk and use it, I can come back in, deploy this machine again, which I'll show you in a subsequent video, do all the updates, and have a brand new master disk image with all the fresh updates, for example. So the next thing I like to do, this is my lab machine. So this is my laptop, high-powered laptop, that I do recordings like this on. So I'm going to go out to here, and instead of the default location for Hyper-V, I'm going to go ahead and browse here. And what you'll notice is that under my documents, that way I can copy all these pretty easily. I've got a virtual machines folder and I've created a new folder for the Windows Server 2016 master disk image. So I'm gonna choose that and say select folder and it's gonna put my files for this virtual machine into that folder. So I'll choose next. I'm gonna go ahead and create a generation two and I'm gonna give it 4096 in the aspect of memory. I don't need to use dynamic memory. I've got enough memory on my machine the more we give it, the better off we are. So here, what I'm going to do is just go into default switch and choose next. Now, I might have to come back and reconfigure that switch. I blew out my machine. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm just going to leave this as 127 gig. But remember that these are dynamically expanding, so I'm not suddenly going to use 127 gig of my machine. I'm going to say next. It's going to ask me to install an operating system and I'm going to browse out to my downloads folder and again find that ISO. So I'm going to double click on that ISO and choose next. And then at this point choose finish. Now as this finishes you'll notice that it instantiates my master disk image and then from here I can just come in and start that virtual machine as if it was on a regular machine. Now I've got multiple monitors, so I'll drag this back over. There it is, and I'm going to start the machine. So at this point, there's really no difference what I'm doing here versus what I would do on a physical machine that I've installed a disk into. So I'm just going to wait for this thing to start and let it find its uh, disk. Now, for some reason, it doesn't reboot. What you can do is come up here, do a Control-Alt-Delete, and then you notice I'm just going to pick that. I'm going to do the setup, and it's going to begin to set up my virtual machine. There we are. I'll choose Next. I'll choose Install. Now I'm going to pause now and again till it gets to the next step so that this video doesn't have to be that long. Now at this point I need to go out, grab that key, put the key in, and once I'm done putting the key in, I'll advance. Now as you can see, I've put in a license key for the data center edition. And at this point I need to choose whether I'm going to do a core server installation without desktop experience 
or desktop experience. And for this demonstration, I'm going to do desktop experience. However, remember this same process is going to work whether we're doing data center, whether we're doing standard edition of server, whether we're doing operating systems, and of course, whether we're doing uh, core or desktop experience. The difference, of course, with core is I'm going to have to go in and install the updates a little differently. Um, for this video, I would go ahead and do desktop experience. So I'll choose that and it's going to go ahead and begin the install once I accept the license agreement. Now, folks, if you haven't read Microsoft's license agreement and you're an IT professional, you should know what the license agreement says. At this point, I'm going to choose customize and there's that 127 gig dynamically expanding disk that I want to install this on. Now, of course, especially with virtual machines, I can come back and install additional virtual hard disks or do whatever needs to be done for my implementation of that virtual server. Okay, so as you can see, this is pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and pause while it gets files ready for installation. It's copied the files already. And when it reaches the next step, I'll start the video again. So as you can see, it's finished with that. It's going to go ahead and reboot so that I can put in my administrative username and password. Now, I don't need to worry about putting in a permanent username and password because when I generalize the image, we're going to get rid of all the accounts. We're going to get rid of all the security identifiers and basically have an image that we can deploy as a brand new server. All right, so here we are and I'm going to go ahead and put in just a temporary password. and choose finish. Then it'll go ahead and finalize the image. It'll ask me because I'm on a virtual machine, do I want to change the size? I'll just say okay. So I'll change the size of the video at this point. And then of course I'm going to log in. Now I don't have to worry about changing computer names or doing any of that because again, this is a master image. And when, when we run the sysprep at the end, we're going to get rid of that. So let me go ahead and pause while it comes up for the first time. So of course, if we want our image to be um, the best it can be, i.e. the most current, we're going to want to install updates. So I'm going to go out and install the updates for the server. What I will point out is in Server 2019, they have this new Windows Admin Center, which brings together all the tools, and I'll be creating subsequent videos on that as well. So look for those Admin Center videos. So at this point, I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to type update, and it will bring up check for updates. I'm going to go out and I'm going to install all the updates that are needed for this Server 2019 instance. Okay, so I will pause the video and I will continue this process of installing updates, downloading, installing until I can show you a screen that says all the updates have been installed. So you'll want to continue this process. Don't just expect the first time that all the updates are being installed. So check it, check it again till you get that confirmation. All updates have been installed. So let me pause while I do that. All right, so I've installed all the updates. As you can see, if I click check for updates, it's checking for updates and it says I'm up to date, okay? Now, a couple things, depending on how many updates and iterations that you've gone through, something that you might consider, and I haven't checked to see if this actually works in server 2019, but in previous versions of the server, there it is, disk cleanup, or you might have to install the disk cleanup tool, okay, which I highly suggest. What we'll do is we'll clean up the image now. As you can see, there's not a lot here, but what you might find is that there are a ton, especially if you're doing like a client where it's done um, an update, a major revision update, you're going to find some many, many gigs of updates that you can get rid of by cleaning the disk, thus making the image smaller okay before we go ahead and run the sysprep on it so as you can see here is that image size here okay so we're done with that now what we're going to do is we're going to simply go out to the c drive we're going to go to windows 
we're going to go down to system 32 and the folder we're looking for is sysprep so we're going to go all the way down to the bottom till we find sysprep there it is I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to run the sysprep tool so I'll choose sysprep now how do I want my image to be do I want an audit mode image or do I want an out of the box experience and I'm going to choose out of the box experience and then I'm going to make sure that I generalize the image now once I'm done with this process I don't want the image to reboot by the way just to reiterate the generalize remember is going to get rid of any specific settings that were set the security IDs any RIDs, SIDs um, anything that identifies this machine uniquely okay at this point I want it to shut down and the reason I do is I then have the image that I can use and you can watch the subsequent follow-up video to this where I actually use the image to deploy a machine okay so if you notice processing cleanup it's gonna go ahead and do the generalized phase of the sys prep this may take a little longer for you depending on if you're on a physical machine what your processing power is etc so I'm gonna go ahead and pause while this completes so here it goes it's gone ahead and stopped that server and it is done I now have that image okay now sometimes we can even save some more space by optimizing the virtual hard disk while it's not running so if you notice my uh, Windows master image is off I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna go to settings okay and now the first thing I need to do is get rid of checkpoints so I'm gonna disable checkpoints here I'm gonna go ahead and say apply then I'm gonna go up to the hard drive here and inspect the hard drive okay uh, let's see checkpoints exist ah so I must need to delete the checkpoints which I'll do so yeah there's a checkpoint so I'll go ahead and delete that checkpoint and now I should be able to go back into settings come into the hard drive inspect that hard drive so once I'm able to inspect I can go into edit here okay and choose next and I can compact the size of that virtual hard disk so I'm gonna choose next and finish now again depending on you see that it went very quickly depending on your OS and some other things this can reduce the size of that virtual hard disk so now if we go into just to finish off this video we go into my documents let me bring this over virtual machines there is our virtual hard disk right there that we can go ahead and right click we can copy we can then rename and I'll show you in the next video how to deploy a virtual machine with this master image. All right, take care.